guys. So I bought just a few books this month. Just, just a few. So for this book haul, I have bought, I think it is now up to like 28 books. Um, I didn't count them all when I started filming this, but we are going to start with my book outlet order. Um, they are already all out of the box because I didn't want to wrestle with the box the entire time I was filming. Um, so let's get into them. The first one is Stephen King, Bazaar of Bad Dreams. Um, this is a short story collection and I haven't actually read any Stephen King books, but now I own quite a few. Uh, well, I say quite a few, like five. Um, but this is a thing of short stories and I'm really excited to get into them because I think this will be um, a little bit easier for me to kind of dip my toe into his writing. So uh, I was pretty excited this was on Book Outlet. The next one is The Regulators uh, by Stephen King, although it's when he wrote as Richard Bachman. And this is about a sleepy little suburb that suddenly gets their world turned upside down by an over-imaginative autistic boy who gets possessed by an evil spirit thing. Um, and it's basically um, the evil spirit is going to do whatever necessary to become more powerful, which means violent things, um, hurting people, and this autistic boy is kind of defenseless to do anything about it. Um, this actually kind of makes me sad because um, one of my brother-in-laws brothers-in-law, I guess, um, is autistic. So I like, I don't know. I feel like this will be a really weird read for me because I'll be thinking about Polly the entire time. But um, I definitely look forward to get into this because I kind of want to see like what this is about. The next one is If You Dare by A.R. Tour. And this is the third book of the Deanna Madden series. Um, she is a shut-in with uh, murderous tendencies so to make ends meet she becomes a cam girl and if you don't know what that is then you are too young to read this book <laughs> um, I definitely would not suggest this for anybody under the age of like 16 um, it's a little sexy and uh, I don't I don't know I don't really feel comfortable suggesting this to people who are a little bit younger because this does have a lot of like really adult topics in it. Um, I don't know a whole lot about this one because I just read the first one and um, so I kind of want to keep it a surprise. Next is The Kiss of Deception by Mary E. Pearson. Yeah, Mary E. Pearson. Um, and this is about a girl who runs away on her wedding day because she's supposed to be married off to this prince and she doesn't want to. So she runs away and she thinks that she's successful but then these two strangers uh, find her one of them is the prince that she left at the altar, and the other is the assassin that her father sent to, I guess, kill her. <laughs> um, I don't know a whole, whole lot about this, but I'm sure you all know just about everything because everybody on booktube has talked about this. Um, I just recently picked it up because Books and Lala liked it, and I have kind of not been super interested in fantasy after reading Game of Thrones, so I think this will be a little bit easier for me to get into. The next is actually three books in a series, and they're part of the Queen's Thief series by Megan Wallen-Turner. I have the second book, The Queen of Atolia. I have the third book, The King of Atolia, and then I have the fourth book, which is A Conspiracy of Kings. Um, I read the first book last year, and it's about this thief named Eugenides, who is very good at uh, thieving, and he can he can basically steal anything except for when he gets caught <laughs> um, and he ends up getting caught by the king and he gets sent to steal an ancient artifact um, and that's all I'm gonna say because I feel like anything else is gonna be major spoilers but um, it kind of turns his world upside down once he realizes what he's stealing. Next is I See You by Claire McIntosh. If you all have watched my favorite thrillers or my favorite thriller authors, then you will know the name Claire McIntosh. I'm sure if you watch Books and Lala or anybody who really loves thrillers, you'll have know, you'll know this name. Um, this is about a girl that she goes on the train every day and she reads the newspaper and all of a sudden one day she sees her own face staring back at her. Um, from an ad for findtheone.com. Um, it kind of freaks her out a little bit, but then she starts seeing other women in this, um, in this ad 
and they become the victims of very violent crimes, including murder. And so she teams up with a detective to try and figure out like who's the one that is uh, putting their faces out here and is that some sort of like foreboding thing. Next is the Hazelwood and I find it hilarious that it is an Indigo staff pick because I am not in Canada but I love this sticker. <laughs> um, this is about a girl that her grandmother passes away and um, the note that she leaves behind is don't go to the Hazelwood. Well, her and her mom, um, I think go back and she loses her mom in this fantastical world and I'm really excited about this. And plus like, look at that. Look at how shiny that is. Oh my goodness, it's stunning. Next is Midnight, Midnight at the Electric by Jodi Lynn Anderson and I'm very excited about this. I just started this as an audiobook on Libby or Overdrive and it's about this girl who is set to be a volunteer to colonize Mars and she is sent to live with her last known relative who is um, a lot older than her. Um, and there's just, there's just a lot of secrets. And um, I haven't really read past that. I know there's three different timelines, but other than that, I don't know a whole heck of a lot. <laughs> Next is Shadow Song by S.J. Jones. And this is the second book to, I think it's Winter Song. Yes, it is Winter Song. This is a labyrinth retelling. I love the movie Labyrinth. Labyrinth. My mom does too. She actually has my copy of Winter Song right now and she hasn't finished it, so. Mom, if you're watching, which I know you are, give me back my copy of Winter Song, please, so that I could read this. Next is Renegades by Marissa Meyer, and um, I tried tried to take the sticker off, but it was gonna rip the art, and I don't want to rip the art, so I'll figure out what to do later. But this is about two rivaling gangs in a city that's kind of futuristic, I'm assuming, um, and that's pretty much all I know. The next one is The Wife Between Us. Uh, which is by Greer Hendricks and Sarah Pekkanen. Um, I didn't know this was written by two people, <laughs> but this is a book that apparently kind of has you thinking. You think you're reading about an ex-wife, but you don't really know if you are. Um, you think you're reading about a husband that cheats and whatever, and it just kind of plays with your brain the entire time. I have heard a lot of good things about this book. I'm really excited about it. Um, I love thrillers, so this seems right up my alley. And then the last one for the book outlet order is Keep You Close by Lucy Whitehouse. And I have Books and Lala to think about thank for this, which I have mentioned her three times now. So I have her to thank for this. Um, I know absolutely nothing about this book, but um, I saw her read before we met by Lucy Whitehouse and I absolutely loved that book. It was so good. So I'm definitely gonna read Keep You Close. I have no clue what it's about, but I kinda don't wanna know. So I'm, I'm really excited about this one. Okay, and then the next bit of books are all the ones that I bought by myself, like at McKay's, which is the local bookstore, or at Barnes & Noble, which I think is only one of these. I'm pretty sure it's actually just this one. Uh, so we'll go ahead and start with that one. This one is The Dark Vault by Victoria Schwab, and this is both the archived and the unbound, bound up in a bit, <laughs> bound up together, and, um, I'm really excited about this because I think I'm going to really enjoy these books. I tried to read the archive before and I just wasn't really in the mood, but I think now that I appreciate Victoria Schwab's writing a little bit more, I think I'll really get into this and uh, it's convenient that they're both together. So I think that'll make it a little bit uh, more interesting. Okay, and then this one I have actually read before. This is The Bone Season by Samantha Shannon. And this is about a girl, Paige, that she is a dreamer. She actually walks through people's dreams, or she's a dream walker, sorry. And she gets sent to kind of like a camp for people who have special abilities. And, uh, it's just, oh, I, like, I don't know how much to say without it being a spoiler, but this is a really good book. Um, I kind of fell out of love with it for a little bit, but I think it was because I was a little burnt out on stuff like this because a lot of similar stuff was coming out uh, right around the same time. 
but I think if I reread this and then read the mime order and then song right the song rising I think I think I'll really have a new appreciation for this book because I loved it the first time I read it and I'm really sad that I haven't continued on in this series but I found the paperback, which I think is really pretty. I know a lot of people didn't like the cover change, but I really liked it. And uh, I'm excited to see if I can find the rest of these at McKay's. These next two books I know almost, actually I know nothing about, and they are both by Anne Cleves. This is Raven Black and this is The Crow Trap. Um, I have never heard anybody talk about these. I don't know what they're about. They were both like a couple dollars at McKay's, um, but this one has really high reviews. This one sounds a little bit more Victorian almost. I think, I think it's this one. No, this is about a detective. Never mind. Is it this one? No. Never mind. I don't know what I was thinking. But these two sound really interesting. Um, I've heard. Anne Cleves name um, a lot and I think she writes detective books I'm assuming um, so I'm pretty excited to see kind of what her writing is like because I've never heard anybody re uh, review these these next two are kind of along the same vein as the Anne Cleve books these are by Tim Dorsey this is electric barracuda and this is shark skin suit sweet something um, these are both part of a series. These are not the first one. I'll have to see if I can find the first one like through the library or something until I get to these. These are like the ninth and 13th book in a series. But they were both like two dollars and it's kind of like a goofy like almost psych kind of detective story. Um, and they're fun covers. Like how fun are those? And they're always at McKay's. Um, so I'll give these a try. I don't know if I like them or not, but they were only a couple dollars, so I'm not gonna lose sleep over them. Okay, and then this one is The Last Mrs. Parrish by Liv Constantine. I have heard a lot about this. Um, not necessarily on booktube, but a lot, um, like personally, like around Knoxville, I've heard a lot about this. Um, it's about this girl who's like tired of being a nobody, and she wants to be, as I say, she wants to, she deserves more. A life of money and power like the one blonde-haired, blue-eyed goddess Daphne Parrish takes for granted. So, <laughs> this sounds like a mystery. Um, I'm really excited to see kind of like what this is. Um, but I don't know, it just looks cute and fun and it was a couple dollars and uh, I've only ever seen it in the hardback and it was like $22, so I definitely wasn't gonna spend that much, but found it for like two bucks, so I'm pretty excited. <laughs> the next one is The Mountain Can Wait by Sarah Lipsiger, I think. Sorry if I'm pronouncing your name wrong. I doubt you're watching this, but sorry if I pronounced your name wrong. Um, this is about a guy that is driving home from a party and all of a sudden um, this girl is in front of him and he hits her. And then um, the story is kind of told in reverse almost, like what led up to that, I believe and I had never heard of this book. I don't know why I picked it up. I don't even remember how much it was, but I'm, I mean, it looks cool. So I guess I'm excited about it. <laughs> this one is All Things Cease to Appear by Elizabeth Brundage. And it is about a guy that he comes home for a long day at work and his wife and his, or his wife is missing and his daughter's been home alone and she's like three months old, which, as a mom is stressful to hear because <laughs> I just read The Lion Game and that had a stranded baby for like two seconds in it and uh, it was not okay. <laughs> um, but this sounds like another like really good thriller and I've really gotten into them lately. I think in the fall and winter I'll be reading a bunch of them so I just needed to add another one to, uh, to my collection. And last but not least is Fool's Quest by Robin Hobb. I have the first book, which I believe is called Fool's Errand, or Fool's Assassin something. Fool's Assassin. Um, it is the harrowing adventure of Fitz Chivalry Farseer. I don't think I looked at his name before now. That's a mouthful. <laughs> um, 
I've heard a lot of good things about these books. I know little to nothing about them, besides the fact that I hear Robin Hop is fantastic at fantasy. So I will trust everyone that I've ever heard talk about her. Um, and I have these two books, which everybody said to look for the Fits in the Fool trilogy first, I think. I think. Watch, I'm getting it wrong. Which is probably true. But I'm excited about this one as well. I already have the first one, so uh, maybe I'll read it this winter. Who knows? All right, so these are all of the books. Actually, they're not all the books. I couldn't pick them all up. But these are some of the books, <laughs> most of the books that I hauled this month. Uh, tell me what all you bought in the comments and I would love to talk to you all down there. See you all next time. Ah! These are hard to pick up. <laughs> My legs.